So when one of your users deletes something or closes a menu, it can be a bit jarring if that thing just disappears. To fix this, we can instead animate elements off of the screen before they're removed from the DOM, confirming to our users that their action was successful. Here is two ways that we can do this using React and Framer Motion. Okay, so we're starting with a little bit more code here than usual. Don't worry though, we are gonna walk over all of the layout of this just super, super quickly. And if you wanna just grab all the code, there'll be a link in the description. You can just come in here and grab this in JavaScript or TypeScript. Or of course you can just use your own project and add your own exit animations to put this into practice in real time. Anyways, all that I've really got here is this basic little to-do app. You can check stuff off and you can delete it. You can click this button down here and add a new to-do, give it you know some amount of time, hit submit, pretty simple stuff. As for the actual code, and most of this again is not gonna be super relevant to the animation that we're going to make, but I have this piece of state up here that just holds our to-dos. They have an ID, some text, whether or not it's checked off, and then some time. I have a function right here for actually checking off elements, and then another for removing elements. If I scroll down a little bit, obviously it's just all styling stuff. We're using Tailwind CSS here. This header component just has you know the text for this, so we don't really need to look into that. If we go into our to-dos component, though, we are simply mapping over our full list of to-dos, and then for each of those, we're going to create a new to-do in this to-do component down here, which then again, just has a bunch of markup. And then, you know, obviously this checkbox that you can click on and this button with the trash down here that you can click on as well. Scrolling back up, we can look at our form component. So that's this button down here and the little form that it shows. This has a piece of state for whether or not the actual form is visible, how much time, what you've actually added into the text input, and then the unit of time. So minutes or hours in this case, it then has this handle submit function, which just adds a new to-do and clears all off or defaults back the state to what it's supposed to start at. And then finally, down here, we just have our form, which is only actually showing if the visible state is toggled on. And finally, this button down here, which simply toggles it on and off. And that is pretty much it. Again, I don't really wanna walk over all of this markup and stuff. I don't think it's particularly relevant. And instead, we're just gonna jump right to actually adding our animations. So there's actually two ways that we can add exit animations using frame or motion. One, if we just need simple animations and another if we need more complicated animations, and we're gonna actually see how we can do both of them. So what I wanna be able to do is whenever I open and close this little form down here, I want this box, like this form box, to animate in and out. And that's just gonna be a simpler animation. It'll just be like a, a Y transform and an opacity transform. And then for my list right here, whenever I actually delete something, I want it to animate out off of the screen. And I actually want that to happen in a couple of steps. So maybe we'll scale it up and then we'll change the opacity and then we'll you know maybe animate it off to the right or left. We'll change the color different depending on whether or not it's checked off. And of course you can expand this to be you know arbitrarily complicated essentially. So I think that's enough talking about it. Let's start with the simpler version, which is animating in and out this form down here on the right. To get started, obviously I need to scroll down to my form component, which is right here. And then we can actually find the code that shows and hides the form. So that's right here. Now we can just start by adding our entrance animations and then we'll kind of work backwards to our exit animations. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and because we're using frame or motion, if you've ever used frame or motion before, this is gonna look pretty normal. If not, we'll kind of walk through it, but I'm going to import motion from frame or motion like this. Now what the motion component allows you to do is on any of your JSX elements like this form right here, I can just go in front of my form and turn this into a motion dot form. And this is gonna open up a whole world of different animation tools for me defined as props. So for instance, I can define an initial state. The initial state is just gonna be a set of styles like inline styles essentially. So in my case, maybe we wanna initialize this at an opacity of zero. And let's say a Y transform of, I don't know, maybe 25 pixels, say something like that. And then from our initial state, we wanna to animate to something else. And to do that, we use the animate prop like this. So maybe we want to animate back to 100% opacity and a Y transform of zero. Now, if you weren't actually watching, I'm gonna close this back over here. And as soon as I click open, we should see this actually animate back in. Of course, you can also update things like easing and stuff like that if you wanna update actually how the animation runs. For now, I'm just gonna worry about the exit animation. So whenever I actually close this form, I want it to animate back out. Now, just to keep this simple, let's animate this back to our initial state. So back to an opacity of zero and a Y transform of 25 pixels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down under animate and I'm going to change the initial prop, just copy pasted from above to 
exit. So whenever we first mount, we're gonna start with this set of styles, we'll animate into this set of styles, and then we'll exit whenever this is dismounted, or when visible becomes false, back to this set of styles. And if we save that and open this back up and try to close it, we're actually gonna see that it it actually doesn't work. And we can see why if we go ahead and hover over the exit prop right here. So if I hover over this, we can start reading what this says here. Specifically, this component must be the first animatable child of an animate presence to ensure this exit animation. Scrolling back down, we can actually see that there's another exported member here called animate presence that comes from frame or motion. And you'll see that they have an example that looks a lot like mine. So we just need to wrap our little Boolean clause here with an animate presence wrapper, which we can do really quick. So let's come up to the top and import animate presence. Scroll back down, I'll kind of collapse this to, to hide this a little bit better. And we will wrap our visible kind of code block here with animate presence. And we should now see that whenever we close this, it animates back out as we expect it to. Now you can certainly get a lot more complicated than this if you want, but you can probably start to see how this could be a little bit tricky if you wanna run a whole bunch of different animations on maybe not just this element, but a whole different number of elements inside of it. You know, maybe for some reason you want to animate out the text area first or something, or all of this other content inside of this, and you wanna stagger it. Maybe you wanna, you know, show some kind of animation somewhere else on the page. You name it, I'm sure you could think of, you know, a million different examples where having to do these kind of inline animations like this could get a little bit tedious and sometimes actually impossible. And because of that, there actually is one other way that we can perform exit animations. Now, like I said, as an example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these list items right here and whenever they're deleted, we're gonna perform an animation on those. And that is gonna be a little bit more complicated. So let's actually just close up our form. We're gonna call that basic version done and we'll scroll down to our to-dos component right here. And this process is also going to require the animate presence component. So I'm just gonna go ahead first and foremost and go around my to-dos right here. And we'll wrap that with an animate presence component just like this. Now each child of animate presence is going to be one of these to-dos. So also down in our to-do, we're going to need to turn this not into a normal div, but instead into a motion.div. This way we can do something very similar to what we were doing a second ago. We can actually even just copy paste what we had if we just wanna see this working. So let's just grab all this code right here. And then we'll come back down to our to-do and we can just we can just drop this in really quick and see what that looks like. If I refresh the screen, we should see stuff animate in at first and then when it's deleted, it'll animate out and everything will kind of just collapse back in on itself. Now, one thing I actually did just notice that we can just add really quick, this is you know a little bit of a tangent from the video, but we'll check it out anyways, is what I would actually like to do is whenever I delete one of these elements, I would like everything to slide smoothly back into place. And literally all that we need to do to do that with frame or motion is on our motion div right here, which this is one of our to-do items, we need to just add a prop called layout. And if we look at the description for this, you'll see if true, this component will automatically animate to its new position when its layout changes. This could be, you know, a change in Flexbox or something like that. But in our case, what that means is that whenever I delete one of these items, the other ones all animate back into place like that. Now, again, this is all great, but I do want to have a slightly more complicated animation than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete my initial animate and exit props right here from my to-do. And what we're gonna actually do now is scroll back up to the top and import a hook, which is called use presence. The use presence hook also of course comes from frame or motion. And this is going to be the key to creating more complicated exit animations. So down here in my to-do, we'll actually instantiate this. So just like any other React hook, just say use presence. This doesn't actually need any parameters or anything. And this is going to give us back two values. So the first one is just called is present is what we'll generally call it. That's just a Boolean as to whether or not this component is actually mounted. And then the second is a callback function, which we'll call safe to remove. So just to say that one more time, this first element is just a Boolean that tells us whether or not this component is currently mounted. And then the second one is a function that we can call essentially to say that it's safe to actually remove this from the DOM now. And a really simple example of how this works could be something like this. So I'm gonna create a new use effect and I'm gonna trigger this use effect anytime our is present value changes. Now what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say if not is present, then we'll wait, let's say one second. So we'll say set timeout. We wanna call some kind of function and we'll wait a thousand milliseconds and only after a thousand milliseconds do we actually want to call this safe to remove function. And now we'll actually kind of see what's gonna happen here. So if I click the trash can over here, 
it waits one second before it actually removes the element. So if I click a couple of these, we're gonna see that they each kind of wait a second before they get deleted. And during that one second block, we can, you know, run an animation essentially. Now that said, we're not actually gonna use, you know, a, a set timeout or something like this. Instead, I'm gonna create a new function. We'll just say const exit animation. That's not how you spell that. And it, that is also not how you spell that. Animation, something like this. I'm gonna make this an asynchronous function. And then, you know, below the block here, we will actually call our exit animation. And I'll just add a little to-do here, say to-do, you know, create cool animation. And finally, we'll call our safe to remove function like this. So because we're not doing a wait anymore, we should see that all of these just delete instantly now. That's what we're expecting. And now we can actually start running our animations. The thing though is generally with frame or motion, you do use these kind of declarative animations directly on your components, but well, and that, you know, makes this a little bit of an issue, right? Because we need to run animations from this function, not from, you know, directly on an element. But frame or motion actually does give us a, another way to create our animations. And that is using the use animate hook. So back up here at the top, I'm going to import use animate. And if you've ever used something like GSAT before, or, you know, really most other animation libraries for that matter, this is gonna look pretty similar to something you've actually seen before. Now, the way that the use animate hook looks something like this. So I'll say const down here again, and call my use animate hook. This also is gonna give us back two values. The first one we call scope, and that's going to be a reference. You'll, you'll kind of see that come together here in a second. And the first one is called animate, which is a function that we can actually call to run our animations. Now we call this scope because we're gonna actually add this as a ref to our wrapping div right here. We'll say ref is equal to scope. And now whenever we actually run our animate function, it will be scoped to anything within this div. So I can either, you know, use this ref directly or I can animate all inputs within this ref or any p tags within this ref. And the really, really cool thing about this animate function is that it is asynchronous and it can be awaited within an async await function like this, which is actually why I made this an async function. So just to see a very, very basic version of this, let's start by just, you know, say animating the opacity out to zero, something like that. So again, because it's asynchronous, I can await a function, say await animate. I actually want to animate the outermost wrapping div right here. And the way that we access that, oops, is by saying scope.current. Essentially the first parameter to this animate function is just going to be the selector. So if I wanted all of the P tags, I would just say P, but in this case, I want the outer wrapping element. And then the second parameter is going to be your animation, like your, your CSS essentially. So let's just start by saying an opacity of zero and let's see what that gets us. So now if I come back over here and start to delete one of these, we'll see that it animates out its opacity before it actually gets rid of the element entirely. Now, of course we can just, you know, start adding things to this. So maybe we want to animate on the X axis to kind of slide it out and say maybe 24 pixels. Maybe we actually even want to change that depending on whether or not the element is checked. So I could say, hey, if it's you know actually checked, then we'll animate it 24 pixels. And if it's not, we'll go minus 24, something like that. So now if I click one that's actually checked, it'll go out to the right, not checked, it'll go out to the left. Maybe we even wanna delay that by some amount. We could come down here and for this third argument to this function, we get all of our kind of transition props. So I'll just say a delay of 0. Point, say 0.75 seconds. And now when I click on something, it waits a second and then it actually animates out. Now, of course, if we wanted to do something just as simple as this, it would be easy enough to just do that the way that we saw just a minute ago. But for my example, I wanna add a little bit more pizzazz. And to do that, I'm gonna actually just start kind of sequencing animations. I'm gonna remove my to-do here as well. And we'll make another call to await the animate function. So to start as just another basic example, let's do something like, let's say scope.current again. So this is again, just animating this outer wrapping most div. And again, because we're awaiting both of these, this animate is gonna run first, and then this one's gonna run. And for this first one, let's just say, let's scale it up, you know, just a tiny bit like this. And then just as an example, maybe I can actually show you some of these, you know, other easing things and stuff. We can say, let's add a different easing function. You can see all the different options here. We'll just go with ease in. And let's set a duration of say, let's go 0.125 seconds. So now what we should expect to happen here is we should see this scale up first and only after it scales up, should it run this animation, which should wait, you know, three quarters of a second 
and then we'll actually remove the element from the DOM after all of that's done. So let's see it. We should see a scale up and then it slides out. Again, scale up, then it slides out the other way, et cetera, et cetera. And we can kind of just keep adding on different little bits to this animation. So for example, I'm actually gonna copy all of this besides the await and we'll just paste this on up here. And the reason that I'm doing that is I don't wanna wait on this animation to complete before I start running this one. I'm gonna keep all of my easing and everything here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change this top piece to a pair paragraph tag. So the paragraph tag, the only paragraph tag down here is kind of the text that's actually being shown right here. So like the actual to do, what I want to do is I want to animate that and I want to animate the color of it. And I want to animate the color based on whether or not it's checked. So what I want to do, I'll just say color. And just like we did a second ago, we'll say if this element is actually checked, then we'll go to, which is a basic example, let's say green, else red, and now we can go and see what that looks like. So an unchecked one, we should expect this to turn red, just like that, cool. This one should turn green and then go the other way. And these colors are actually killing me. So I'm gonna update those really quick. We'll just go with these hex values. Try that one more time. See what these look like. Yeah, that looks a little bit nicer. Let's try this one, awesome. And that is our full effect. Now, of course, as I mentioned, you can do whatever you want on this. This is a you know a relatively simple example, but you could imagine you know a full exit transition or an exit animation on an entire page or an entire section of a page. You would want to be able to do a whole lot of different things, and that could get pretty complicated if you're trying to figure out how to make that work with animate presence. In, in some cases, it could even be impossible. But fortunately, we do have these hooks to actually be able to do this manually, which allows us to do a lot more complicated different kinds of interactions. Now that's gonna be it for today, guys. If you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. As I mentioned, all of the code is available for free on my website for this in both JavaScript and TypeScript, along with a whole bunch of other cool animated UI components for React and Tailwind CSS. So if that sounds interesting, I would massively appreciate you checking it out. Beyond that, I think that's all I've got for today. I will see you guys next time. Peace.